if we have an m by n matrix, then the rows of that matrix can be looked at as vectors in Rn, and the columns can be looked at as vectors in Rm. And then we can ask, what subspace of Rn do the rows span, and what subspace of Rm do the columns span? And those two subspaces are called the row space and column space of the matrix. So let's let A be an M by N matrix with real entries. And we'll define the column space. Actually, I'll define the row space first. The row space of A. To be the subspace of Rn. So this is an m by n matrix, meaning every row has n numbers in it, so they're all vectors in Rn. The subspace of Rn spanned by the rows of A. So one thing we know about it immediately is that its dimension is less than or equal to m, because if there's m rows, they can't span a subspace of dimension greater than m. Similarly, we'll define the column space to be the subspace of Rm spanned by the columns of A. And then its dimension is less than or equal to n because there's n of them, and n vectors can't span a space of dimension greater than n. So the first natural question to ask is how do we figure out, given the matrix, what is the span of the, of the rows? what's the dimension of that space. So it turns out that the, the row space of the reduced echelon form of A equals the row space of A. So see this, remember that when we perform row operations that's the same as multiplying by invertible matrices. So if we think about all the row operations that we apply, that's, that's like multiplying by one invertible matrix. So applying row operations to A is equivalent to left multiplying A by an invertible M by M matrix, let's say P. So that means that the row echelon form of A equals PA for some invertible M by M matrix P. So let's suppose that V is in the row space of A.
then that means that v equals some multiple of row 1, let's say c1 row 1 of a, plus c2 times row 2 of a, etc., plus cm times row m of a. And we can write that in matrix and vector form. So V equals this row vector of C1 through Cm times row 1 of A, row 2 of A, row 3 of A, etc. So C1 times row of 1 of A, C2 times row 2 of A, etc. Cm times row M of A. I guess we could just write B equals C1 through Cm times A, because if we write row 1 of A in the first row, row 2 of A in the second row, that ends up just being A. Now I'm going to change this expression well, not even change it. I'm going to multiply by P inverse P between the vector of C's and A. So V equals C1 through Cm P inverse P A. And I can do that because P inverse times P is the identity. So multiplying by the identity doesn't do anything. And here we've got a 1 by m matrix times an m by m matrix. So that ends up being a 1 by m matrix. So some other vector of, of coefficients. So d1 through dm, let's say, times pa. So now we've got v being expressed as a linear combination of the rows of pa. So v belongs to the row span of PA. Now similarly, if V belongs to the row span of PA, we can show that it belongs to the row span of A. So similarly, if V belongs to the row span of PA, then V equals some linear combination, let's use D's again, of PA. But then we can write D1 through DM times P. I'll just put the parentheses in a different place and we can do that with matrix multiplication. So now this is some other linear combination of the rows of A. Here again, we've got a 1 by m matrix and an m by m matrix, so together this makes a 1 by m matrix, and we can call those constants, let's say, c1 through cm. And therefore, v belongs to the row space of A. So the row space of A and the row space of the row echelon form of A are the same. Now the row echelon form of A has a bunch of non-zero rows followed by a bunch of zero rows. It turns out if we just take those non-zero rows of the row echelon form, they form a basis of the row space of A. So 
So claim two, the non-zero rows of the row echelon form of A form a basis of the row space of A. So to see this, well, by the first claim they span. So anything that's in the row space of A, we can express as a linear combination of things that are in the row space of the row echelon form of A. And to see that they're linearly independent, suppose that some linear combination of them is zero. So we suppose some linear combination of them is zero. Um, let's let let's let E be the row echelon form of A. So then that means that C1 through CM times E equals a vector of all zeros. Now the the column of E containing the first leading one. Every row of E has a leading one somewhere, and some of the columns of E will have leading ones. So the column of E containing the first leading one gives... So pick some column of E, we're going to multiply it by this row vector of, of C's, and we get C1 through CM times, now the first leading one is going to have all zeros below it. So something like 1, 0, all zeros equals 0. So that means that C1 plus a bunch of zeros equals 0. In other words, C1 equals 0. And then if we look at the second the column of E containing the second leading one. Gives, all right, that column's going to look like something one and then a bunch of zeros below it. So the one will have zeros below it and possibly other things below above it. So it's going to give, now we already know C1 is zero, so it's going to give zero C2 through CM times something one and all zeros equals zero. Whatever the star is times zero is zero. And we've got C2 times one is C2 plus a bunch of zeros equals zero. So that tells us that C2 is zero. And similarly, when we look at all those columns one at a time that contain those leading ones, we're gonna find that all these C's are zero. So similarly, C3 through, C three through CM are all equal to zero.
So C3 equals C4 equals everything equals zero. But if we suppose that some linear combination of these rows is zero and that linear combination has to be the zero linear co combination, that's the defin of, definition of what it takes for these rows to be linearly independent. And if they span and they're linearly independent, then they're a, um, a basis of the, the row space. And thus they are a basis. All right, so the non-zero rows of the, the row echelon form of A form a basis of the row space of A. All right, I'll do an example at the end. Let me talk a little bit about the column space. So an easy observation about the column space is that the column space of A equals the row space of A transpose. And that's because so the reason is that the, the columns of A are the rows of A transpose. Transposing the matrix swaps the, the rows and the columns. So that's all there is to that. So I guess we know one method for finding the a basis of the column space. We could transpose the matrix and then do row operations, and then the non-zero rows remaining are going to be a basis for the column space. If we transpose them again and make them columns again. But if we know the, the row echelon form of A, or any row echelon form of A, that actually gives us information about the column space, and we don't need to do any more work. So if we know a, a row echelon form of A, now there's different row echelon forms depending what, er, what order you do your row operations in, but any of them will work. So if we know a row echelon form of A, and the leading ones appear in columns, let's say J1 through JP. Then columns J1 through JP of A are a basis of the column space. So we just take out the right columns of the original matrix A, and that gives us a basis already. We don't really need to do any more row operations or any kind of calculations at all. Now the proof, let me give you just an idea. This, this takes some thought. So let's let E be some row echelon form of A with leading ones in columns J1 through JP. And let's recall that the solutions of AX equal all zeros and EX 
equal all zeros are the same. So the whole reason we introduced row echelon form was to solve systems equations and well if, if they didn't give us the same solutions of the original system then then they would be useless. So the, the solutions we get from EX equals anything are the same well EX equals zero are the same as AX equals zero. If we had a different B here and we do row operations then the, the right hand side would end up differently too. But if this is all zeros, then no matter what row operations we do to the augmented matrix A with a bunch of zeros at the end, it's still going to leave us with zeros at the end of the augmented matrix containing E on the left-hand side. So these, these two systems equations have exactly the same solutions. So this means that every statement... we can make about a linear combination of columns of E must hold about the corresponding columns of A. I must hold for the corresponding columns of A. So, now this is the part that requires a little thought. Let me give you an example and see if it comes to life. So if the sum of the first three columns of E equals the fourth column of E, then we can say that as a linear combination statement. So that means that E times 1, 1, 1, negative 1 in all zeros equals a vector of all zeros. So first column plus second column plus third column minus fourth column equals zero is the same thing as saying fourth column equals the sum of the first three columns. But then that means that this is a solution of EX equals zero. So then it has to be a solution of AX equals zero, which means that A times one, 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 negative one and all zeros equals all zeros, which means that the fourth column of A is the sum of the first three columns of A. So then we have um, linear independent statements too. So if there's no linear combination of rows 1, 3, and 5 that equals 0 without being the 0 linear combination of E, then that means that there's no linear combination of columns 1, 3, 5 of A that equals 0 without, them, without the coefficients all being 0. So linear independence and spanning translate exactly from E to A.
So if we want the basis for the column space of A, we just look at the columns of E that have leading ones. Now they don't form a basis, but the corresponding columns of A form a basis for the column space. Maybe I should write that down. That's the end of the proof. So that means that the columns of A corresponding to columns of E with leading ones form a basis of the column space of A. The columns of E themselves don't necessarily form a basis of the column space of A. They form a basis of the column space of E. They form a basis of column space of E, but not of column space of A. All right, and then one more easy claim and we can do an example. And this last claim is that the dimension of the row space of A equals the dimension of the column space of A. They're different spaces and they have different bases, but they have the same dimension. And the reason is that the dimension of the row space of A equals the number of non-zero column non-zero rows of the row echelon form of A, any row echelon form of A. And that equals the number of leading ones in the row echelon form of A. And then we just said that that equals the dimension of the column space of A. So if all you want to know is the dimension, it's just as good to find one as the other because they're going to be the same dimension. All right, now for an example, let's let a be the matrix 1, 2, 0, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, and 5, 6, 4, 7. Let's find bases for the row space and the column space of A. So for the row space, we'll do row echelon form, and then we'll take the non-zero rows, and that'll be our basis. So let's let row three become row two become two minus three times row one, and row three become three minus five times row one, and we get one two zero three three minus three is zero, four minus six is negative two. 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 3 threes is 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. And then 5 minus 5 ones is 0, 6 minus 5 twos is 6 minus 10, which is negative 4, 4 minus 0 is 4, 
7 minus 5, 3 is so 7 minus 15, which is negative 8. And then let's say row 2 becomes negative 1 half of row 2. And row 3 becomes negative 1 fourth of row 3. So we've got 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 2. And then, of course, if we let 3 become 3 minus 2, then those all become zeros. So basis for the row space is 1, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 1, negative 1, 2.